Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Good morning, Mr. Norton. You want a new car? Yeah, can you get it down right away? We're in a hurry. Okay. Mr. Norton's car coming up. Sounds like a quick lunch counter. Hamburger coming up. The way these fellows handle cars, it's a wonder the fenders don't look like hamburgers. David, if you're late, why don't you go right down to the office and let me take the driver's test alone? How would you get there? Drive, of course. It's only a couple of blocks away. But you haven't got a license. But I can drive. You've got to have a license before you drive. That's as silly as which came first, the egg or the chicken. I fail to see any connection with the case in oh, hand. silly. There's every connection. Look, you can't drive before you have a license, and you have to know how to drive before you can get a license. Naturally. Well, then how does anyone learn how to drive if they have to have a license first? They get a learner's permit, buddy. Why didn't they give me one? Because you told me you knew how. And if you insisted on getting your license right away. Of course. Why not? Oh, Lord. Is your car, Mr. Norton. Did you put gas in it? She's just on a half a full. Oh, well, I haven't time this morning, but always fill it up with gas before I take it out, will you? Okay. Claudia. Hmm? Are you absolutely sure you know how to drive well enough to take this license test? I know how to drive well enough to drive. You don't have to know how the engine works. You're all about those thingamajigs, do you? Well, you have to know about some of the thingamajigs. Oh. Well, you better tell me then. Say, David... What sort of driving do they test you on? What do you mean, what sort of driving? I mean, plain driving or fancy driving. I do plain driving, uh, all right. Now, let me get this straight. What kind of driving do you call fancy driving? Well, driving backward is fancy driving. I don't think I drive backward too awfully well. I am assuming that when you say driving backwards, you're talking about backing into a parking spot. Assuming. Whenever you're nervous, you get stuffy to hide it. David, I don't see what you're nervous about. You don't, huh? I can back a little. It's not something you do a little, like like dancing. Oh. Well, what I mean is I, I don't always get the hang of it. Well, that's just fine. Listen, backing a car is one of the things they're bound to test you on. Well, show me. I can't show you while we're driving along in the middle of traffic. I can only tell you a cardinal rule. What? Always turn the wheel in the direction you don't want to go. Huh? What do you mean, huh? I mean, why? Well, so the car will go in the direction you do want it to go. I see. You sort of sneak up on it while it isn't looking. Hey, David, watch out for that truck. Now, don't teach me how to drive. I'm not. I just don't want us to get killed. Say, David, what's that little stick? What, what's that little stick you jiggle? What little stick? That one there under the wheel. That's the gear shift you jiggle. It's... Oh. Say, listen, Claudia, are you sure that you know how to drive? Oh, I've driven for years. For years? How many years? Oh, about seven or thereabouts. According to my calculation, that brings you to the age of 11 or thereabouts. Mm, thereabouts. Then when you were 11 years old, your feet wouldn't have touched the floor. They didn't. How'd you know? Merely assuming that you were a normal 11-year-old, in size anyway. How did you drive if your feet couldn't touch the floor? Oh, I sat in George's lap. He used his feet and I steered. You sat in George's lap yep. and you stared. Mm -hmm. and you were 11. Right. I guess there's no grounds for jealousy, but who was George? George is Aunt Louise's man down the country. Claudia, I, I know you must have been very cute sitting in George's lap steering Aunt Louise's car. Oh, but I was. I don't think that technically comes under the heading of driving a car. Oh, don't be silly. I drove after that. Using your own feet? Of course, using my own feet. And without George helping you? No, all alone. A anyway, by that time, George is dead. How did he die, Claudia? He just died. No accident or anything. Oh, uh, a heart failure, maybe? No, pneumonia. 
It had nothing to do with my driving, if that's what's in your mind. Well, it was. Now, to return to this little stick, when you drove, did you ever shift gears? Oh, is that what it's for? In Aunt Louise's car, it was in the middle of the floor. For the past number of years, it's been here. That's not a good place for it. Well, we'll take that up later with the manufacturer. In the, mini- in the meantime, now, all the, all the positions are the same as they've always been. Even reverse? I could always find reverse. Good. Then we'll start from there. How uh, did you find reverse? Well, it, it always made a loud noise. Aunt Louise's car must have been a pretty wreck when you finished with it. Not at all. George drew a diagram of where everything was. Where? What was? Where one, two, three was, in reverse. He pasted it on the brake front. I suppose you mean the dashboard. That's what I said. And after George died? David, you talk as if I were an idiot. I didn't say I couldn't change gears. I merely said it was difficult to do it sideways instead of on the floor. Look, you, you're right. It is difficult. It's more than difficult. It's it's complicated. What? Now, darling, listen. Why not postpone this test, and I'll take you out someday for a little practice in the country. How about it? You don't seem to have any confidence in me, David. Think of all the people who drive. It's so... I'm thinking of them. and wondering why there aren't more accidents. <laughs> Now what happens, David? Almost anything can happen from here on out. Look, that car's driving off. I guess we're next. I guess we're Good morning. Which one of you is taking the test? Uh, I am. You going along in the back seat, mister? Sometimes wives get nervous with their husbands along. I'd much rather go than wait. Will it make you nervous, Claudia? Who, me? Nervous? Why should it make me nervous? All right, come on. Let's get going. Uh, Claudia, that button puts the top down. Oh, does it? Oh, yes. Well, it'll be much pleasanter with the top down, don't you think? That's the windshield wipers, lady. It's a nice day, remember? You just put the top down. Claudia, that's the radio button. I know that's the radio. Really, these new cars have so many buttons and gadgets on them, so wonder how anybody gets them started. If you want to start the motor, you just press this knob, lady. Nothing happens. Inspector, you press that knob when you want to light a cigarette. Oh, Sorry, that's my mistake. Oh, this is it. Claudia, take your foot off the accelerator. I am! Anybody think you'd think I didn't know... Think I didn't know how to drive? Well, anyway, lady, you got us started. Now, just drive up the street a couple of blocks, huh? Now? Well, pretty soon, lady. There are more people waiting to take their tests. All right. Up the street? Yes, lady, up the street. Just... Plain driving? As plain and as careful as you can make it. I was just wondering. Claudia, Claudia, that... that... I know, reverse. I, I just wanted to check it to see if it was still there. It don't have a habit of moving. Now, are you ready? Lady, we've been ready. All right, all right. Here we go. I I, I think the thing thingamajig... Grab quick. No. No. Oh. The thing of a jig grabbed so quick it nearly shook my teeth out. What's the matter with it? David, it, it didn't do that this morning when you drove it over here. No, darling, it didn't. Maybe no. the car ain't lady broke. Oh, that's a Western Express. Are you from the West? Yeah, West 49th Street. But I've been to the movies. <laughs> the lights changed, lady. Stop. Oh, oh, oh lady, my goodness. Claudia, take it. Oh. You sure stopped sudden. Well, you said to stop. You were so quick, you took the rest of the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, stop at the intersection. I'm practically there. But you messed up the traffic behind you, Claudia. The lights change again. Go ahead. Are you ready? Uh, you won't catch me twice, lady. I'm holding on for dear life. All right. Well, you sure fooled me that time. Never a dull moment. See? The car's working better now. Sure, that's it. It's the car. Now, very slowly, lady... Come to a stop. Now, park the car between those two cars there. Park it? Yeah, park it. You know, like you were going to get out and leave it. I'm not, though, am I? No, no. You ain't getting out quite yet. Neither am I, worse luck. Then why should I park it? This is a driving test, lady, see? The inspector wants to know if you can park the car, Claudia. Oh, certainly. Better get started. 
Go on, park. All right. I am. Lady, I said between those two cars. You went ahead of them. From here to the corner's completely empty. I thought you said this was a driving test. It is. That's why I told you to park the car between those two cars. Just to see if you know how. But no good driver would go into a cramped little space like that with a whole empty block in front of him. Really, you know you have to use your common sense when you drive. You make it hard for the other car to get out, too. Okay, lady. You park the car. Now wait for the lights to go red and turn the car around. Around? Yeah, around. You mean all the way around? The inspector means all the way around, Plotty. You mean like I'd forgotten something or what? Look, you got me so I don't know what I mean. You know, I don't think it's good to make circles, even in a big street like this. I didn't say turn it around like that. I just said turn it around. To me, you're not making sense. I mean, just turn and go back the way you came. Oh, that's different. <laughs> you had me puzzled for a minute. I had you puzzled. Well, Claudia, just relax and think of George's lap and relax. Oh, no, that would mix my feet up. Say, buddy, are you nuts, too? Could be, could be. All right, we're going to turn now. Are you ready? That expression gives me the willies, lady. They say it when planes go off, when they fire guns, and usually just before somebody gets hurt. Hey, hold on a minute. Wait, the bus gets out of the way before you try it. The way you say try it sounds as if you don't expect me to be able to make it. My philosophy is don't expect nothing. Expect the worst. I only get money for this job. Soldiers get medals for less. All clear. Let's go. And don't close your eyes like that. Were my eyes closed? Oh, we made it. Of course, there was nothing to it. Now, what'll I do? Drive you back to where we started from? No, no, no. No sense tempting Providence twice. No, lady, just draw up right along here someplace and I'll walk the rest of the distance. But it's no trouble, officer. Thanks, lady, this'll do. A little walk is just what I need. Well, here we are, safe and sound. Do I get my license now or do you mail it to me? Lady, please, listen to reason. But I, I, I passed the test, didn't I? I did everything you asked me to without bumping a fender, either. There are worse things than bumping fenders, Claudia. But she didn't do any of them today, worse luck. She's got us there. Buddy, look. Your wife will get her license. I can't help myself, but you seem like a nice, smart fella. And this is a cute little car. Now, maybe just a little more experience before you let her loose in traffic, huh? I promise, officer. As I love my fellow countrymen... I promise. All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. At refreshment stands, at lunch rooms, at service stations, you'll find Coca-Cola now ice cold and ready for your enjoyment. And when you shop at your favorite food store to pick up your supply of Coca-Cola to take home, pause for a moment and refresh yourself at the familiar red cooler. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. (laughs) 